Ah, uh, this. <laughs> I did a tour where a very unusual band, very electronic, featured a lot of costume changes. <laughs> this was the costume. <laughs> Hi, I'm David Byrne, The Internet. The Internet has always had opinions on my work, so Esquire has asked me to explain some things. So, here I go. Kendall Jenner channels David Byrne. <laughs> I don't know. Her shoulders look a little droopy, if you ask me. It needs a little bit, a bit more support in there, Kendall. There's a lot of mesh. I'm wearing a whole girdle, a reverse girdle. Instead of kind of holding in my stomach, it makes it bigger. That's what you've got to do. Oh, ah. A lot of other artists have been dealing with this kind of thing lately. This is Charlie Crist. He's the former governor of Florida. He uh, ran for re-election and uh, used uh, one of our songs. I think it might have been Road to Nowhere. You know, politicians do this all the time, all the time. We've heard about Bon Jovi and Springsteen and Neil Young and all these people complaining because Trump's been using their songs. So I decided, okay, I'm gonna sue this guy. And Mr. Christ, he claimed that he had spent all his campaign money and that settlement that we were asking for, well, he couldn't pay it. So I said, okay, you can't pay it. Here's what you have to do. You have to do a public apology and admit that you were wrong and we're gonna put it on YouTube. And so that's what this is. David Byrne says, Jerry Seinfeld gave him advice on America. Yes, yes he did. <laughs> Amy Schumer came to the show <laughs> and she brought some of her funny friends. I went and had a drink with them afterwards. I was sitting next to Jerry Seinfeld and his wife and he said, yes, when you deliver this one line, the line is the fire department doesn't want people dancing in the aisles. They will have an unfair advantage in the event of a fire. And Jerry said, you got it wrong. The funny part, funny line is unfair advantage. The fact that you put in, in the event of a fire after that means you kill your joke because people are not gonna laugh because they wanna hear what you're gonna say. Just flip it around. And he was right. I just flipped those two little phrases and it got a laugh every night. Matilakels, how did you know? I'm wearing one right now. <laughs> I got given one of these years ago. And I noticed that sometimes stagehands and, and the crew at various music shows and things would be wearing these things. They have big pockets. You can put hammers and nails and tape measures and all kinds of things in there. I have to say that in, in these, some of these warm months, there's a nice breeze that happens as well. Oh, I get to plug Spike's movie. The tour that I did a couple of years ago, I adapted for a Broadway show and it turned out it was very successful. It was all sold out. I invited Spike Lee to come see the previews that we did and Spike liked it. After he'd saw, seen the second show, he said, yes, I want to do this. So here it is. There's a couple of little additions, but it's pretty much the show as we did it. Why, it's the baggage handler who tosses everyone's suitcase into Long Island Sound. <laughs> <laughs> I'd seen John Mulaney and Nick's show, Oh Hello, on Broadway, which was fun. They asked me to be one of the guests, they had a different guest every night. And Mulaney asked me to be in a children's show that he was doing. But I thought, okay, this is not going to be your regular children's show. And it wasn't. So I, I did a few numbers there. And, I, and it was about talking to children about their fears and children telling adults, treating the children really like adults. And then after our Broadway run and just before the lockdown, Mulaney reached out to me at the very last minute and said, can you be in this skit we're doing about sushi at LaGuardia Airport? And it was... It was it was kind of a no-brainer. Wow, I don't know how many years ago this was. Not too many, maybe about eight years ago or something. I did an, an immersive theater piece called Here Lies Love, which is about the rise and fall of Melda Marcos and her husband, to the dictator who ran the Philippines. It was a lot of fun. I hope that it gets brought back. Here is my friend Spike Lee, who came to the show. And when, because it was an immersive show, 
we could, if we saw someone we recognized on the dance floor, because it took place in a disco, we could go up and go, will you come and visit the cast after and have your picture taken? So we got a lot of these pictures. David Byrne, I identify with Susan Boyle. Well, let's put it this way. When I started performing many, many decades ago, I was not very socially comfortable talking directly with strangers and groups of people. I had no problem getting on stage and kind of just blasting it out, being as weird as I wanted to be. I thought maybe this woman, Susan Boyle, who would just knock it out of the park with her singing, maybe she feels the same way personally. Thank you, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope that this has <laughs> allowed you to understand a little bit more about uh, some of the stuff I do. Thanks again.